These would be Michael's last games in Chicago. And game three played out like a thank you note to the fans. Chicago's 96-54 win in Game 3 was the biggest route in NBA Finals history. The Bulls were two games away from the title. People have said a lot of things about our physical tiredness, but our mental toughness is, is there, and I don't think that should ever be overlooked. Okay, here we go. After dominating Game 3, the Bulls' physical resilience would be tested in Game 4. Two dribbles, spins in, scoops, and scores! Another win for the Bulls. The countdown to the championship had reached one. Three one. Do you still feel like you guys are the underdog? No, we're in the driver's seat right now. And, uh, you know, we just have to come out ready to play next game and you know, try to put it away. Before game five, the celebration had already begun. I said, come on. Baby, don't you want to go? Back to the same old place. Sweet home, Chicago. Can I ask you, how big does that look on IMAX? Does that look like a gigantic? Bucket of popcorn and I'm extra. It's a whole mountain of it, folks. Come on, man. Put everything on the court. Put it in on the basketball court. And we come out up the court. We all celebrate and, and Joe's gonna be happy. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Before there was anything to really celebrate, Carl Malone and the Jazz found an answer to every move the Bulls made. In game five, the Bulls came up empty and Michael walked out of the United Center for the last time. Back in Utah for practice the following day, the defeat was already forgotten. For here was another secret to the spell Michael had held over the rest of the league ever since his first championship. Even when the Bulls weren't superior physically, they had a philosophical edge. I think Phil had a lot to do with that, with his Zen practice, uh, his whole emotional approach to a game of basketball. I've experienced a lot of different coaches, but he gave me the understanding about life in a whole different frame. I think his teachings or the understanding of Zen Buddhism is how you view yourself to deal with the realities of life surrounding you and somehow be able to correlate that to a simple game as basketball. This is something that we talked about a lot as a basketball team, is about how to be in the moment, being able to visualize what might happen in those times. Michael so embraced this, and I think that was the beauty of his game, is that he had all these abilities to adjust, not force his own predetermined idea, but allow those things to come to, together for his game. 
I tend to be calm. Things tend to slow down. As I go into situations that people don't know the outcome, I've already experienced them in my mind, just playing tricks with myself. So it didn't seem new to me, and I wasn't afraid to fail with it. Once I began to understand that, I became a master of the game of basketball.